Hey there, if you already know how decision trees and random forests work, you're all set. If not, don't worry, I've got links in the description where you can catch up. But today, we're diving into something extra. The extra tree regressor. Imagine you're at your lemonade stand, predicting how much lemonade to make each day. But this time, we're trying something new, the extra tree regressor. It's like random forest but with an extra twist of randomness. So let's see how this helps us make even better predictions. Let's take a look at the features we have, starting with sales versus temperature. As temperatures rise, we notice a trend. People buy more lemonade. So, there's an upward trend in sales with higher temperatures. Now, here's something interesting about our sales patterns. They're actually higher on weekdays. It seems like more people are buying lemonade during the week, reflecting a consumer trend that favors more purchases on those days. Just like with temperature and weekdays, we can spot patterns in other features too. Things like events, holidays, advertising spend, discounts, and even whether it's raining or not all have their own impact on sales. When we conduct exploratory data analysis, we are looking for these important trends that can guide our model choices. For example, one model that works well with different types of data and patterns is the decision tree. Fitting a decision tree is like solving a puzzle. The algorithm carefully looks for the best possible splits across all features and checks different thresholds to get the most accurate results. This detailed search helps the tree make very precise predictions on our training data, and the tree can grow really complex to fit every detail. But there's a catch, this complexity can lead to overfitting. Overfitting means the tree might perform really well on training data but struggle to make good predictions on new data. To handle the limitations of decision trees, we turn to something stronger, random forests. Instead of relying on just one decision tree, which can easily overfit the training data, a random forest builds a whole fleet of trees. Each tree makes its own prediction, and then the random forest combines all of them for a more reliable final prediction. This teamwork helps improve the model's accuracy and makes it more robust. But here's the trade-off. Imagine running that detailed splitting process hundreds or even thousands of times. For big data with lots of features, random forests can take a lot of time and computing power. This is where we start looking for even faster options. And that's where the extra tree regressor, or extra trees, comes in. Extra trees builds on the idea of random forests but takes it a step further by adding extra randomness. Instead of carefully finding the best split for each feature, extra trees chooses splits at random. This speeds up the process since we don't need to search for the perfect split and we can build trees much faster. How it works, step by step. Just like in random forest, one important decision we have to make is how many detectives, I mean, how many trees do we want in our forest? The default choice is 100 trees, which would give our detective a huge team of junior detectives working together. But remember, we're just dealing with 15 data points here a pretty small case study. So, to keep things simple and focused, I'm giving our lead detective a smaller team, just three junior detectives. That's right, we'll create an extra tree regressor with only three trees. Unlike random forests, which bootstrap the dataset for each tree, extra trees utilize the entire dataset during training. Now time to fix the parameters for the forest. Keeping in mind, we are working with very small datas with just 15 observations. Max underscore depth equals two, meaning this setting limits how deep each tree can grow, allowing only to splits, which means the tree can have a maximum of three layers. Importance, by restricting the depth, we prevent the trees from becoming too complex and detailed. This helps to avoid overfitting, which is when a model learns too much from the training data and struggles to perform well on new data. N underscore estimators equals three, meaning this parameter specifies the number of trees or detectives in our ensemble. Importance, having more trees allows us to reduce individual biases, leading to a more reliable average decision. This makes our model more robust and less likely to overfit, which can happen if we only rely on a single tree. Max underscore features equals three, meaning this limits the number of features each tree can consider when making a split to a maximum of three features. Importance, by introducing this randomness, we ensure that the trees in the forest are diverse. This helps to reduce overfitting by making sure that no single feature can dominate the decision-making process. 
min underscore samples underscore split equals 2, meaning this sets the minimum number of samples needed in a group to allow the tree to split. Importance. This rule ensures that splits are based on enough data, preventing the model from making unreliable predictions when working with very small groups of data. Now that we have fixed all our important parameters, it's time to build our very first tree using the extra tree regressor. Our junior detective is now ready to dive into the data. From our list of available features, temperature, weekend, event, holiday, ad spent, discount, and rain. He randomly selects ad spent, temperature, and weekend for its root node. In the extra tree regressor, our detective doesn't go through all the possible split points like he would with the random forest regressor. Instead, he quickly selects splits in a more random manner, which makes the process much faster. Now, let's put our detective skills to work and solve for the ad spent feature. Our junior detective will go through the two halves of the dataset created by the split. Our detective needs to find the average sales for each half to make his predictions. For left half of the data, given sales data is. Detective takes the sum of it and divide by the number of data points to get the mean or prediction. Now, for each sales data point, we subtract the mean 101.81, square the result, and sum them up, and divide by the number of data points to get a messy. In similar manner, we calculate MSE for the right side of the data and take average to get the quality of the split. Now that we understand how detective checked the quality of the split for ad spend, we know how he checked for other two features. Since the MSE for ad spend is the lowest among the three features the detective considered ad spend, temperature, and weekend, this indicates that ad spend does the best job of grouping similar data points in terms of sales. In other words, splitting the data based on ad spend results in the smallest prediction error, making this split the most informative for our model. So, the detective uses ad spend as the feature to make the root split in the extra tree regressor. This choice means that at the very top of the tree, the data will be divided based on ad spend, setting the foundation for making accurate predictions about sales based on this key factor. After deciding the root split, our detective moves to the next level in the tree this time working only with a portion of the data, just 11 samples. Just like before, the detective randomly picks three features to consider, selects a random split within each, and calculates the average MSE for all three. And again, the feature with the best split quality wins. It's this randomness that makes extra trees so fast and effective. If you're not totally clear on this process, you might want to replay the last three minutes. This repeated randomness is the real trick behind extra trees, allowing them to learn quickly and handle large datasets without getting bogged down. Now that we have our three trees, let's assume these are the entire extra tree regressor. Imagine we have a new observation. Each of our three trees will independently make a prediction based on its own rules. Let's see what our first detective has to say about our new entry. At the root node, the detective asks, is the rain less than or equal to 0.856? Looking at our new observation, we see that the value for rain is zero, which means the detective says, yes, and moves down the left path. Next, the detective encounters another question, is the event less than or equal to 0 0.934? Again, checking our new entry, the value for event is zero, so the detective confidently replies, yes, and continues down the left path. Finally, after navigating through the tree based on the features of our new entry, the detective reaches a leaf node that predicts the sales value to be 121.473. Similarly, extra tree regressor asks for the prediction from each individual detectives or trees. Sum them up and takes the average to reach the final conclusion. Pitfalls and misconceptions. Overestimating speed and efficiency. Many believe that extra tree regressors will always train faster because of their randomized approach. While extra tree regressors can indeed be quicker than models like random forests, mainly because they don't bootstrap samples, they can still demand substantial computational power, especially when working with large datasets or when you increase the number of trees and underscore estimators significantly. So, it's important not to assume speed without considering the data size. Assuming randomness guarantees better performance. Some users think that just because ETRS are random, they will automatically perform better than other models. Although randomness can help create more diverse trees and can reduce overfitting, it doesn't guarantee that the model will be more accurate. 
proper tuning of hyperparameters, like the number of trees and maximum features, is still crucial for achieving the best results. Randomness alone isn't a magic bullet. Neglecting feature importance, users might think that ETRS treat all features equally, which could lead to overlooking important variables in the dataset. ETRS actually provide a feature importance metric. This metric is very useful in identifying which features are driving predictions. Ignoring feature importance can result in missing out on valuable insights from the data, so it's vital to pay attention to it. Pros and cons. Pros of extra tree regressors. High accuracy. ETRS often achieve high predictive accuracy, particularly for complex datasets with nonlinear relationships. Reduced overfitting. By randomly selecting splits and features, ETRS help mitigate overfitting, leading to more generalized models compared to single decision trees. Fast training. ETRS can train more quickly than some other ensemble methods like random forests since they do not use bootstrapping. Feature importance. ETRS provide insights into feature importance, allowing users to understand which features significantly influence predictions. Cons of extra tree regressors. Complexity. ETRS can be more complex to tune and optimize, requiring careful selection of hyperparameters for optimal performance. Less interpretability. While they provide feature importance metrics, ETRS are still less interpretable than individual decision trees, making predictions harder to explain. Computational resource intensive. ETRS can be computationally demanding, particularly with large datasets or a high number of trees, which may require significant resources. Sensitivity to hyperparameters. The model's performance can be highly sensitive to the choice of hyperparameters, necessitating thorough tuning to avoid underfitting or overfitting. I hope this video has helped clarify the workings of extra tree regressors and how they differ from other models like random forests. If you found this content useful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with fellow learners, and don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into machine learning concepts. Keep experimenting with your models and let your curiosity guide you. Until next time, happy coding, and remember, in the world of data, every clue counts.